And due to circumstances beyond my control, we're back at it on this 27th day of June, 2024. This is Wake Up in Anche Valley. I am Dan Kuntz, your host. 59 degrees, clouds and sun are doing a little battle up there, but the sun's going to have the upper hand. Going to be a cooler than normal day today. We're talking just lower 70s for the afternoon high, or normal high in the afternoon. This time of the year is above 80. Not going to get there today, but that passing cold front will be exiting the area throughout the course of the day today, so we're going to be dealing with some wind. It is what it is. A little wind and then a little more wind tonight. Then a good looking weekend. We're kind of all over the board from a Mother Nature standpoint. And then another system will move in on Sunday, which will increase our chances of rain, which we need. We officially got 0.15 inches of rain up a pain barn, but all of the rain events that happened yesterday, as you all know by now, were isolated thunderstorms that kind of popped up. They dumped some rain. A couple of small lightning caused fires. They were quickly doused and then the system moved on. All those details are coming up, plus news, sports. Good night for the Mariners. Boy, do they need to get out of town, out of Tampa with a victory. They did yesterday morning, highlights of that. Apple Sox just crushed the Kelowna Falcons. Uh, they sweep the Falcons, they are looking good. Their goal is to win the first half of the WCL's North Division, so they will guarantee a spot in the playoffs. Right now it's looking pretty good. They still got work to do. They actually have today off, and then they head to Bellingham for the last three games of the regular season, or the first half of the regular season. And that's good because Bellingham is one of the teams that's chasing us, so we kind of control our own destiny there. This weekend in Rock Island, specifically at the golf course, uh, it is the second annual Rock Fest. We'll talk to the brand new head pro at the Rock Island Golf Course. Nice gentleman by the name of Jason Doby, and he's a good golfer too, and Jim Zumini who works for the city of Rock Island, who's basically putting this thing on. Going to have a big party, beer garden, live music, all that good stuff. And the weather's going to be nice. If you want to head out to Rock Island, Mike McKnight has got an opinion. And it's Thursday, Pause for Pets. Astro the dog needs a permanent home. We'll swing by and visit with our friends at the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. And it's tour time. Let's go with our Wenatchee Heights camera overlooking our beautiful Wenatchee Valley. And yeah, the hills are starting to brown out just a little bit, as you might imagine but it's been a cooler than normal summer now granted summer is only one week old speaking of that sunrise this morning 506 sunset tonight 902 that's 15 hours and 56 minutes of daylight we have lost 31 seconds of daylight since the summer solstice of one week ago so yeah can you tell the days are getting shorter by 31 seconds over the course of a week <laughs> 79 was our high yesterday we're not going to get there Today we're going to be dealing with wind today and tonight, but again, pretty good looking weekend. Saturday is going to be warm, but it's not going to be real sunny. I'll give you those details in just a little bit. Up to Lake Chelan we go. Good morning to Lake Chelan from our Union Valley cameras. Is it me or does the lake look especially blue? It does look really blue. Union Valley, uh, yesterday we had that pointed up lake towards Tahican and Holden Village. This time we have a pointed down lake to Chelan proper, which continues to grow and grow and grow. And there's the Chelan Butte, of course, overlooking Chelan. We have a couple of cameras on that physical abutment. Let's go all the way down to just outside Hanford. Beautiful view there. This is a long way from us, but we have SkyFi towers down there. So we have SkyFi cameras down there. The SkyFi system is very popular among people who live in areas like this, rural areas where Fiber doesn't run anywhere close to where you live. That's a little swath of the Columbia. You can see there, that's a ways from us. And much closer to home from our Waterville camera, looking down over the orchards. I love that netting that they put over the cherries because of course the cherries start to ripen, but the birds like to eat the cherries as much as I do. And so they put that little netting, protective netting to keep the birds from eating the crops. There's Earthquake Point off to your left and a beautiful view there. That's our Waterville camera looking up towards Lake Chelan, good stuff. Check out this screenshot from uh, 249 yesterday afternoon. Uh, I was napping, I missed the whole thing, but we had an isolated thunderstorm, look at that. And look at that red spot there. That was a serious dose of big time heavy rain. It didn't last very long, just above Rock Island, up on the Rock Island grade, basically by Payneborn Memorial Airport. It came down hard, not very long, but it came down hard. Look at that cell, and there's nothing else around it. And that eventually moved up to the Pondere in Ferry County, but that was uh, for a, just a brief period of time. That picture was taken at 249 yesterday afternoon. For a brief period of time, it came down pretty good in some locations and not at all in other locations. So
From the National Weather Service, once again, the big story today, unfortunately, is going to be the wind. A lot of people are getting tired of it, but there's nothing you can do about it. 74 for the afternoon high. We'll call it partly sunny. Probably be dry today. No real chance of any rain. It's going to be breezy. Sustained winds 13 to 18 miles an hour. Gusts above 30. Not out of the question. It's going to be windy overnight tonight for the most part. By 3.30, 4 o'clock early Friday morning, the winds will eventually die down. That's going to allow for a pretty nice Friday. How about sunshine at a high of 84? Take the day off tomorrow. It's going to be nice. As I already mentioned, clouds are going to have the upper hand on Saturday, which is okay. You won't get sunburned if you're heading out to Rockfest or anyplace else for that matter on Saturday. That alleviates that little problem, but it's going to be warm. I have 87. So cloudy but dry on Saturday. Sunday, for most of the day, lots of sunshine at a high of 86. Late in the day on Sunday into Sunday night, overnight into Monday, the winds pick up again. Another cold front comes in. We drop down to just 81 with lots of sunshine and lots of wind on Monday. And then a gradual rebound on Tuesday and Wednesday. Don't forget, Monday is the first day of July, just like that, Whew, flying right by. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll let you know it's making news on this Thursday. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. The family at the Epladolin want to help your loved one feel at ease in their new home environment. Epladolin offers beautiful one bedroom and studio apartments. Residents enjoy three delicious home style meals a day, laundry service, housekeeping service, and encouragement to make themselves cozy in their new home. Epladolin welcomes your family to come and visit their family. Epladolin, independent and assisted living. They make the complicated easy for you. Call today for a tour. Few things strike fear in the human heart, like the possibility of a rattlesnake bite. Dogs can encounter rattlesnakes on their walks or in their yards, and being curious, often get bitten on their face, neck, and legs. Luckily, a vaccination is available to help neutralize venom so dogs experience less pain and swelling. Even if your dog has received a vaccine, you still need to seek immediate help. Dr. Sean Abeas and the staff of Paws and Claws care about your pet's health. Call 888-PAWS to schedule your vaccination today. Now there are even more reasons to meet at the Pibus Market. Outdoor dining and tastings. The fabulous Farmer's Market. Saturday Artisans on the concourse and your favorites all week long. No matter the reason, it's always time to meet at the Pibus Market. Pibus Market, where community meets. When you've been in business for 40 years, it's because you understand change and you put members first, always. Now Works is announcing a change in their membership model. Up to six people on one membership that you can mix and match. The more people, the bigger the discounts. Introducing the Works shared membership model. One membership, friends and family and flexibility. Works, the cleanest, friendliest, most helpful gyms you and your friends will ever join. Breezy winds out of the west northwest at 15 miles an hour. It's going to be between breezy and windy all day today. Also cooler than normal temperatures, certainly for this time of the year. The winds will die down overnight tonight. Friday looking good. Saturday a few clouds, but pretty mild. It's nine minutes after the hour. The Wenatchee School District plans to have the now closed Columbia Elementary School fully occupied by the 2025-2026 school year. The building anyway. On Tuesday, Superintendent Corey Callahar presented a consolidation update to the Wenatchee School Board and shared that there are several ideas for how to use the former school site, but for now, the district does not have a, quote, definitive plan, end quote. The district says its plans to keep the site for Wenatchee School District programming and use it as a tool to grow enrollment. Callahar shared the district stakeholder Long Range Facilities Committee shared ideas like an after-school space, a city recreational center, and a building for the Valley Academy of Learning, so they can move into there. Though there will not be an occupant for the building this fall, Kalahar said the district will still save about $2.8 million as planned and work to ensure that the building is maintained and safe. Grant County's interagency narcotics enforcement team teamed up with local law enforcement to provide enhanced security at the Beyond Wonderland Festival. It was at the Gorge Amphitheater last weekend. 
INET is what they call themselves. They conducted eight investigations. They confiscated a couple of vehicles, seized a firearm, and took hold of about $3,000 in cash. Agency officers also collected over a pound of illegal drugs, including ecstasy, molly, cocaine, and fentanyl. The heightened security comes in response to last year's shooting during the festival, which left two dead and three injured. The Grant County Sheriff's Office says the confiscation of the firearm and a large amount of illegal drugs made their operation a success. The owners of Union Hill Cider Company announced on Facebook they are back in business. They're going to reopen after a temporary shutdown. Back in May, you might remember, Douglas County officials issued a shutdown for the tasting room as a result of violating numerous county codes, including failure to have a commercial business permit and violating a temporary occupancy permit. The business says they have made the necessary changes for reopening. That included adding signage to the business road and adding a second fire hydrant. The owners say they will now be, they have been issued their final permits and they're going to reopen their doors today at 4 in the afternoon. Cindy Gonzalez, the owner of the Bloom Factory, took to Instagram last week to announce that her shop is going to be relocating to Wenatchee Avenue. Gonzalez originally opened her business last September on South Columbia Street. She's only 18 years old, but she says that her business outgrew the space very quickly. The young entrepreneur told us that her handcrafted bouquets sell out almost every weekend. On Mother's Day, she sold out her entire inventory in 15 minutes. The flower shop will open at its new location right in the heart of downtown 4th South, 14th South Wenatchee Avenue, and that will happen on July 12th. Link Transit has awarded five local organizations with used vans. It's part of their surplus van grant program. The five organizations each get a van. They are the Wenatchee Rescue Mission, the Plain Food Pantry and Community Church, Cafe, Pinnacles Prep, and the Chelan Teen Center. The surplus van grant program gives used vehicles to qualifying nonprofits or governmental agencies that contribute to the community development. The van recipients uh, are picked from applications that undergo a thorough vetting process. Uh, the vans uh, range from five passenger vans to 11 passenger vans. By the way, the next round of applications uh, opens the spring of next year. And a parking garage at the corner of Columbia Street and Arondo Avenue has some color to it now, thanks to a really cool project. The Bonanche Valley College students in the Art 141 in illustration course created the mural. It's very bright, it's pretty cool, it has botanical and geometric designs. The project was completed by six students with the help of instructor Ellen Brew and was designed by student Bet Betsy Waters. We met with Waters and Brew to learn more about the project and the class. In the spring quarter, what students are learning is all about murals. So how to take a drawing or a painting or a digital design and scale it up to a larger scale. And we do that by starting small, so we start with small drawings or sketches and then uh, do bigger work but on a smaller scale than what you see behind us. So we started with like a mini mural which was creatures in corners and they had to draw, um, draw up a sketch and then transfer it onto a wall uh, in a corner. And then we did text-based murals on an exterior wall at the college. And then they had a little bit more freedom to design any sort of representational mural that they wanted between six to eight feet tall or wide. And then for our final project, uh, we went really large. And this is how we ended up with the mural behind us. As we started the quarter, we started with making mood boards and that gave me a real good like direction of what I liked, what, where I was going, and what kind of projects I wanted to make. Um, so as we got toward the end of the quarter where it was time to make our final project, we all had the option to make a design for this space. We knew that this space was available and that they would be open to having a mural down here, so everyone had the opportunity to, to draw or create something that could go up on this wall. When I was doing the um, research and just kind of looking for inspiration when we were creating mood boards, I found myself being drawn over and over again to very bright, colorful designs. Um, some of them were just geometric and then some of them were botanical, um, but I didn't see really a combination of both things and so I kind of thought that that might be a fun juxtaposition to put the two together. Um, so something very, very structured and uh, 
precise with something like organic and loose, I thought would be kind of fun. So the size of this mural was chosen partially by what was possible in the time frame that we had. So we just had a couple weeks to complete this mural. There's ample wall space in this parking garage. So we decided to stop it at a natural stopping point based on um, other elements on the wall. So at the end of the mural, you'll see there's some electrical boxes and wiring, and we thought that was just a nice visual spot to stop it. But we wanted to carry it up the stairs so that when people are walking by on the sidewalk, they can kind of get a glimpse of something interesting and maybe draw them down uh, to see the whole mural. It was such a fun class to be a part of. It was so supportive and encouraging um, to be a part of this group. and. Uh, just got to learn a lot of new skills and try some new things and it was it was just the best. And that is what's making news on this Thursday. One more chance to find out what the heck is going on. Actually, I have three chances because the evening news airs at five o'clock, six o'clock and ten o'clock every Monday through Friday, unless it's a holiday. And if that doesn't work in your schedule, you can watch the news whenever you darn well want to. Our news will be up and running on our homepage, ncwlife.com, and our Facebook page, our YouTube page. We have X, we have Instagram, we have a app right there. There, download the app uh, by uh, take, picking up your smartphone and clicking away. You're good to go. And if something out there you think warrants our attention, you send us an email, news at ncwlife.com. If you like local baseball, be it the Apple Sox or the Mariners, you had a good Wednesday. Sports is next. You're watching Wake Up in Angie Valley on the NCW Live channel. I moved here six years ago. The manager here asked me what I like to do, and I told him that I like to play games, I like to play cards. And he said, boy, have I got a woman for you to meet. <laughs> and he introduced me to her, and we walked down the hall, and I took her hand, and we've never let go of each other. Life is so good when you're happy, and I'm very happy at Prestige. Since 1932, Camp Seneca, nestled on the beautiful shores of Lake Wenatchee, has provided children grades 1 through 12 with the ideal location for kids to learn new skills, have fun, and make friends while creating memories that will last a lifetime. Camp Zanika's rustic log cabins and their staff serve to provide each group a unique summer camp experience. Register for Camp Zanika today, www.campfirencw.org. Celebrate this great country of ours at Rockfest in Rock Island, June 29th. Four rockin' bands start at 1 o'clock on the stage at the golf course until the fireworks begin. So bring your chairs, pack a picnic, or enjoy one of the many on-site food vendors. Link will be offering a free shuttle to the golf course from downtown Rock Island. Rockfest, the last Saturday in June. Find them on Facebook. And thanks to Rockfest 2024 supporters John Port at Real Homes and the Town Toyota Center. Have you noticed how expensive it is this summer to feed a family at most restaurants? Even a burger basket for six people can run you 60 bucks. But at Abby's, you can still feed a family of four to six for less than $26. Real value. That's one more reason we're legendary. We know what Abby's customers like on their pizza. Meat. Lots of meat. That's why this month, we're piling on the classic pepperoni, Canadian bacon, and beef. Abby's Triple Topper has the meat you love. And right now, it's on sale. Order your Triple Topper at abbys.com. Sports at 19 minutes after the hour. It was a rough road trip for the Mariners, but... They got out of Tampa with a big victory of 5-2 yesterday morning over the Rays. Seattle fell behind early, but Raleigh behind Cal Raleigh to take the lead. And despite a rather interesting ninth inning, they did hang on for the win. They finished the road trip 3-6. and six. Ground ball. That's going to be grabbed. Nobody covering first. A race to the back. Safe. And here comes the run in the score. Head first. Caballero across the plate. And the Rays take a one nothing lead. Wow. And How about that? What was Ty France doing? You know, that was a chopper that George Kirby was clearly going to glove. And there's no one at the bag. Now, he's well off the bag. He goes for, well, he went for the ball. Kirby got it. Take a look where Caballero was. And he never stops. 
Cabiero goes. Pitts taken. First strike. Throw down the second. Got him. Nice tag by Ryan Bliss. A great throw by Mitch Garver. Fine execution right there. The shutdown Tampa Bay here in the fifth. Nicely done all around. Swing to drive. There it goes. Way out of here. The Mariners have the lead. Big Cow with a home run. His ninth is a left-hander. 14th overall. Takes his RBI count to 49. Hey, now. So many times if you need something clutch to happen. Amen, brother. Cow is right there in the middle of it. In her half, 422 feet. 2-2 two and two to J.P. Slicing drive. Get up. Yeah, it does. Garver scores and flying right behind him is Canzone. Two run, two out, single. J.P. Crawford. Ground ball, right side. They get one at second, throw to first. Not in time there. A run scores to make it 5-2. Two. two balls, two strikes, two on, one out. Tony deals. Ground ball, here we go. Six, four, three, rack em. Mariners win this game. Andrew Scott Service says the Mariners are really glad to be going home, and he liked the way that they fought hard for yesterday's victory. We needed to find a way to show up today and really compete. We did that, um, starting with George. thought he was outstanding. I think they hit one ball hard off him uh, in six innings. He was on top of his game. It's exactly what you need. Um, and we didn't have much going offensively at all. A uh, ton of credit to Julio. A nine-pitch hit back. He draws the walk. Uh, Cal gets up there, works into a good count, and then gets one pitch and doesn't miss it. And then the add-on runs at the end were, were huge. So uh, uh, credit to our team. I know it's been a rough trip. I sat here last night and tried to explain that the sky was not falling. This is baseball. It happens. You go up, you go down, you just have to grind through it. And uh, when it gets hard, you, you got to deal with it. Getting a win here, they always end up being crazy at the end. Uh, it's just the way the Rays are wired. They never quit. And then we're able to get some huge outs. Uh, uh, it says a lot for Thorny. Uh, that's his first career save. And you know, it's about as tough as one as you can get. So uh, he did a great job. He just executed pitches, and, and Garb did a great job. So Seattle returns home tomorrow. They begin a three-game series against Minnesota at T-Mobile Park. The first pitch tomorrow, 6:40 on Root Sports Northwest. The standings: so the Mariners won, but so did Houston. In fact, Houston swept Colorado. Uh, they won yesterday, seven to one. That keeps the Astros four and a half behind the Mariners in the American League West. Texas lost till the Brewers, six to five in ten innings. The Rangers are now seven and a half back. And then you have the Angels and the A's. Uh, by the way, the Angels beat the A's again. The final there was 5-2. to two. Closer to home, Max Hartman drove in four runs, including a two-out, two-run shot in the bottom of the second. And the Wenatchee Apple Sox complete a three-game sweep at the Kelowna Falcons 14-7 last night at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium. Gas signal already. Another 0-2 from Luna. Swing a high chopper, third base side. Cooney comes up with it. His only play is the first. He'll send it over there for out number one. Gonzalez does score on the play for Wenatchee as the Apple Sox have made it a two to one score. Colonna still in the lead. Second RBI of the summer for Castagnola on the ground out to the left side. Doherty to second, Hartman to third. Gonzalez scores. Luna's one two pitch. Hit over toward the left side, kept on the infield by the shortstop, cast along, and he makes a great throw to first, but it is not in time as it draws the first baseman Pena off of the bag. It'll be an infield single for Peary, and coming home to score, Max Hartman ties this game up. So another run for Hartman, who's now got 24 to lead the entire West Coast League. Doherty able to advance the second, and Peary beats it out on the throw to first base. What an effort there from Nate Castellon to keep it on the infield. But the throw not in time to first base. Gonzalez, the 1-0, is popped out toward left field. Jones was playing in on the shift. Stumbles does make the catch from his knees. He'll fire it over toward third, but Freeberg is in to score on the sacrifice fly. Maybe that ball got caught up in the wind. Gavin Jones got a bad read on it, then stumbled. But as he went down, he was able to secure the baseball. A sacrifice fly by Gonzalez to drive home Freeburg. Max Hartman attacks the first pitch he sees, sends this ball out to right field, and it's gone! Get out of town, Max Hartman! A two-run homer to put Wenatchee in the lead. It's 
a three-run bottom of the second inning on Mad Max's first long ball of the summer. On a big moment for Hartman there as he heads back to the double. What a one the count to Boscarino. 0 for 1 with the ground out last inning. And the pitch. Swung on and floated into center field. It will drop down for a base hit. Perry comes in to score. It's 6 to 3 Sox. Cade Benavidez advances to third base on the play. It's an RBI single for Luca Boscarino, his 13th ribby of the summer. 7 to 4 Sox. They bat in the bottom of the fourth. Doherty takes off. It's a hit and run, and it's executed perfectly. A base hit into right field. Easily into score, Gonzalez. Doherty keeps running, and he ends up at third. It's 8-4, to Wenatchee in the fourth inning. Castagnola with his second run driven in of the night and his third of the season. 2-2 pitch, roped into center field. It's the fourth hit of the night for Palayo. Benavidez waved around from third. He will score. Elijah Palayo is four for four as he drives in the Apple Sox 12th run of the game. 12 to four Sox with two men down in the sixth. Two singles and two runs driven in, along with two runs scored. 2-0, rope to right field. He's driven in a third run. It's a base hit to bring home Friedberg. Palayo turns on the Jets and heads over toward third. It's 13 to four Sox here in the sixth inning. Castro fires, swung on, hit back up the middle and it will get toward center field for an infield single. The shortstop Castellon eventually got to the ball on the grass. That was gonna be a tough play. He threw to first, but much too late as Hartman records his third hit of the night and fourth RBI to drive home Palayo. A three. And the 2 up. Swung on and chopped. First base side just past the mound. Gonzalez charges, tosses it over toward Cloyd, and that's your game. The Apple Sox sweep away the Kelowna Falcons as they pick up a 14-7 victory. So you make it four in a row now for the Wenatchee Apple Sox. We like that. It's their third sweep of the summer. They are now a game and a half ahead, ahead of Edmonton and two and a half games ahead of Bellingham for first place in the North Division. Wenatchee gets its second day off today, and then they wrap up the first half at Bellingham this weekend. This is going to be big. If the Apple Sox win two of their three games against the Bells this weekend, they will clinch the first half title. There are the rest of the scores from the West Coast League. And strangely enough, uh, uh, Corvallis just keeps right on winning. Who would have thought that? Uh, so there's your scores from the West Coast League from yesterday. And again, the, uh, they get a day off. So there's your standings now in the North. As you can see, a game and a half lead over Edmonton, two and a half games over Bellingham, four games over Victoria. Victoria is mathematically eliminated. So somebody has got to win the first half of the West Coast League North and see they're going to beat Wenatchee Edmonton or the Bellingham Bells. As far as the South is concerned, once again, Corvallis running away with it. They have all but clinched the first half South Division standings with Portland, the Pickles, uh, on their heels, but probably not enough. Bend in third, and poor Walla Walla have been struggling all year long. The Wenatchee Wild is already gearing up for next year. What is June? What are you talking about, Wenatchee Wild Hockey? The schedule is out. The schedule came out a couple of days ago, so they know who they're going to play. There's the home schedule right there. Our good buddy Austin Drade dropped by this very program yesterday to talk about the home schedule. Last year the schedule came together a little bit later with the with the move to the WH with Winnipeg moving to Wenatchee, changing conferences, changing uh, changing a lot last year at uh, at the 11th hour. So there had to be some some moving around and kind of take what you get. But this year we start in the WHL right away, uh, part of the scheduling process from the beginning. So yeah, we're able to pick up, I think, uh, 23 Friday and Saturday night dates and eight Sunday games as well, which uh, were, were really good for us last year. A lot of the, a lot of above average crowds on Sunday afternoons. And, uh, well, it was the perfect time. They mm -hmm. dropped the puck at four o'clock 
on Sunday afternoons, which for a lot of people works perfectly into their schedule. It does. You're able to get home and uh, and have dinner at a decent time. The kids are able to get homework done before they uh, before they go to bed. But at the same time, you're able to still have a little bit of afternoon, get some stuff done before you head to the uh, head to the rink and hopefully catch us uh, winning a hockey game that day. So 4.05 uh, works out pretty well for the schedules, and I think it's been really well received by our fans. Obviously, the numbers seem to bear that out, too. Of course, as you know, last summer, the wild ownership, the Whites, bought the Winnipeg franchise and moved it to Wenatchee. So there's 22 teams, and Austin says right now the league is pretty stable. Right now, this is uh, this is the league. We've got two uh, 22 great ownership groups, very committed. They put in a lot of resources to uh, to make things uh, the best they can be for the players and the and the staff and their fans uh, all across the league. So, this is uh, I think things are going to be pretty stable. I don't see uh, anybody dropping out. Probably not expansion. The WHL is the biggest of the three uh, Canadian Hockey League uh, circuits. So, I don't see any expansion, but uh, I don't see uh, any relocation. I know there have been some rumors, a story popped up yesterday uh, up in Prince George that somebody wanted to uh, to buy them out and move them to uh, Chilliwack, I think. But uh, I I know there's there was a statement that came out last night. I'm not sure uh, there's more details there than, uh, than I can wrap my head around, so I won't worry about that. September 21st is their home opener against the Seattle Thunderbirds. You can see the entire home schedule by going to our website ncwlife.com. Of course, for tickets, go to WenatcheeWildHockey.com. And those are just some of the games that people are playing. On this 27th day of June, happy National Onion Day. Today, onions have been a staple for about 6,000 years. They think the, uh, the cultivation of onions began in Asia about 6,000 years ago and then spread all over the world. Uh, for two reasons, it became very popular very quickly. Number one, they last a long time. So you can harvest uh, onions in the fall and you can still eat them in the spring so they can store through the winter. And of course, they're real good for you. They're full of uh, complex sugars that are actually good for you, natural sugars, uh, vitamins, minerals, fiber, beta carotene, folate. They have no fat, zero fat. Not surprisingly, the yellow onion is the most popular type of onion. 75% of all the onions grown and consumed are yellow onions. I put green onions in a lot of my soups. Onions have gotten very popular lately. In the last 20 years, consumption of onions in this country rose 50%. And back in the old days, I mean the really old days, when people started coming over from Europe to North America and calling this place home, European settlers brought onions with them because they didn't know if you could actually grow onions or even if they had onions in North America. As it turns out, Native Americans have been growing onions and eating them for hundreds of years before the Europeans arrived. So don't worry about packing onions, guys. We got you covered over here. Uh, a staple of a lot of recipes, including my chili. I put a lot of onions in my chili. Happy National Onion Day today. It's 33 minutes after the hour. Today in history, 74 years ago today, we talked about the start of the Korean War. Well, two days after North Korea invaded South Korea, the United States under President Harry Truman says, hey, we just can't let this happen. We just can't let North Korea just take over the Korean Peninsula without putting up a fight. He says, we're going in. We're sending troops. And our involvement in the Korean War began. It lasted three years, one month and two days. The numbers are very sobering. 36,574 Americans died in the Korean War, 36,574. 450,742 Americans were wounded. 7,926 Americans went to Korea and never came back. They ended up MIA and untold millions of Korean civilians were killed. They think over two million civilians on both sides. Uh, died in the Korean War, but we're in on this date in 1950. Say goodbye to Route 66, June 27, 1985. The United States Department of Transportation decertifies Route 66 from Chicago to Santa Monica, all 2,448 miles. Parts of Route 66 is still there. Of course, this was the primary way uh, for people to migrate west, uh, especially during the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. So if you want to go to sunny Southern California and start your life again, you took Route 66 and a lot of communities and a lot of businesses thrived along that highway, along Route 66. 
because the highway was extraordinarily popular, very popular. And so businesses popped up everywhere. And then when they realized that the interstate highway system was going to put Route 66 out of service, and they, they fought it, they didn't win. Route 66 decertified on the state 39 years ago today. And this is the 25th anniversary of the final baseball game at the Kingdom. 56,530 fans on hand, the 1,765th Major League game, and the last one is played at the Kingdom. The Mariners beat the Rangers 5-2. Fittingly enough, Ken Griffey Jr. hits the last home run at the Kingdom. Here's a little look-see. But in a major league game, that was special. Here's the pitch on the way to Junior swinging a drive deep to right field down the line. There it goes. Goodbye, baseball. He did it. Holy smoke, Ken Griffey Jr. with a three-run homer. Mariners take the lead. Three to two over the Rangers. Number 377 for Junior. And there go the flash bulbs. His 27th home run of the season electrifies the crowd, a sellout crowd. His final game of the Kingdom, and Junior comes through. Holy smoke, that is baseball theater, folks. Baseball theater. Wilson, the native of suburban Chicago. Mesa, a native of the Dominican Republic. The closing battery here at the Kingdom trying to end it. Now the stretch. The 2-2 pitch on the way to Rusty Greer from Jose Mesa. Swing and a fly ball hit into left center field and moving over. Here's Hunter on the run. He's got it. And an era is over. The Mariners win it in unbelievable fashion. 5-2. My, oh my. This place exploding. 56,530 with flash bulbs going off. You would think the Mariners had just won the World Series. They haven't, but it's the best thing until it comes along. That was on June 27, 1999, but they didn't open Safeco Field, now T-Mobile Park, uh, for another three weeks because they knew it wasn't going to be ready in time. They had to tweak the schedule a little bit because they realized we're not going to be ready for our scheduled opening day. So the Mariners went on a 12-game, 14-day road trip. That's a long road trip. And the All-Star break, and so they could finish up Safeco Field, which would eventually open on July 15th, over two weeks, almost three weeks from the time they last played in Seattle. Let's do birthdays. When she was 19 months old, Helen Keller went to bed. And when she woke up, she could not see and she could not hear at the age of 19 months. Many people think Helen Keller was born that way. She was not. They figured now, the doctors had no idea. They were completely puzzled. They finally figured out that we now know that she either got meningitis or scarlet fever, but uh, she, that illness left her both uh, deaf and blind and she became the advocate for the deaf and the blind, the legendary Helen Keller. Born in the state in 1880. J.J. Abrams has done good for himself. Uh, Armageddon, Star Trek movies, Star Wars, The Force Awakens, Lost, Mission Impossible 3, on down the line. J.J. Abrams, 58 years old today. And speaking of Hollywood, Tobey Maguire, 49 years old today. Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 3, Spider-Man 4, Spider-Man 19, The Cider House Rules, Seabiscuit, The Great Gatsby, on down the line. Tobey Maguire, talented guy, 49 years old today. Special thanks to our platinum sponsor. That, my friends, would be Alpine Air. For heat and air, call Alpine Air. They are the pros. They should always be your first call when your HVAC goes on the fritz. Special thanks to our friends at Pool to Spa Services, celebrating 35 years of outstanding service. Pool to Spa Services on Worthen Street, right down the road from the Pibus Puppet Market. And special thanks to our friends at Prestige Senior Living at Colonial Vista. Their main campus in Wenatchee and their satellite campus in East Wenatchee. Mike Minotti's opinion is about combat vets. We're going to go to Rock Island to talk about Rockfest with Jim and with Jason. That's coming up. First things first, Astro the dog needs a permanent home. It's Paws for Pets. Paws for Pets is presented by Alpine Air Heating and Cooling, Merry Maids, Doghouse Brewery, Leavenworth, and Club Crow Bar and Grill. 
Hi, I'm Coralie with Wenatchee Valley Humane Society, Animal Care Manager here. And this is Astro. Hi, buddy. Astro is our five-year-old um, St. Bernard, um, we think Australian Shepherd mix. He's a big fluffy boy <laughs> and he's beautiful. He has this white and black spotted coloring. He's got some little polka dots here and his left ear is all spotted. He's a really beautiful boy. Yeah, you are. And he's just a big fluffy, big fluff monster. <laughs> yes. Yes, you are. Um, we actually, and we actually had Astro as a little puppy originally. He was adopted from us. And oh my God, his, I looked up his puppy photo and it is ridiculous like a stuffed animal. I swear to God. <laughs> so it's so fun to see what he's grown into. <laughs> yeah, I would not have guessed he would have been this much dog for that adorable little ball of fluff. <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> Astro came to us um, as an owner surrender uh, because his owner just unfortunately didn't have enough time to be with him, um, was away on business a lot, um, but he really wanted his boy to have a good home, so he brought him to us um, to show you. And yeah, so what we do know about Astro is um, he lived with other dogs. Uh, throughout his life and they got along great. He's a very dog friendly dog. He likes our dogs here and um, Yeah, he loves going on walks. He's very cuddly loves being with people Yeah, you do um, Oh, we also know uh, he's he's a little bit blind and a little bit deaf <laughs> It's kind of kind of a unique feature, but it doesn't stop him yeah, he doesn't, I don't think he even really notices. He's just happy all the time. He's just happy with whatever. Yeah, yes you are. We don't know about cats because the owner didn't have any. So we don't have any information on that. He probably wouldn't notice them, honestly. <laughs> but um, yeah, if, if you'd like to come and meet our big fluffy boy, we are open uh, Thursday, Thursday through Tuesday. 12.30 to 6.30 and you can make an appointment on Wednesday if that works better for you and we would really love you to meet him. Give them a call at 509-662-9577 or visit their website at wenatchehumane.org. Pause for Pets is presented by Alpine Air Heating and Cooling, Merry Maids, Doghouse Brewery Leavenworth and Club Crow Bar and Grill. Tiki Hawaiian Barbecue, family owned and operated on North Wenatchee Avenue, right next to Hooked on Toys. Tiki Hawaiian Barbecue uses only fresh ingredients handcrafted with love, including authentic Hawaiian barbecue and Japanese style ramen noodle soups. And the bubble teas will keep you coming back for more. Enjoy the culinary tour of the Pacific Rim with Hawaiian barbecue lunches and combo plate classics, as well as ramen noodle soups. Tiki Hawaiian Barbecue, enjoy their comfort food like you're one of the family. A ductless unit from Carrier can keep anyone comfortable. Take Shelly, for instance. She finds me time in her new attic turned home gym. And with her Carrier ductless unit, the temperature is always perfect. No matter how intense her workout gets. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. Headaches, neck or back pain, been injured in a car accident, a work injury or fall? Studies show that whiplash causes pain year after year. Your neck is supposed to be curved and acts like a spring to absorb shock, but when it's damaged, it straightens or reverses, and this causes headaches and pain. The solution is our specialized comprehensive combination care. You need our team of professionals who will address every point of your injury with very specific equipment and skill. Stop by Wenatchee or Leavenworth for a free consultation. This is Mike, Mad Dog Magnati, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, I work with combat veterans, some of whom suffer survivor's guilt, and they often ask themselves the question, why? 
Why me? Why did I survive when others didn't? Now, what I want them to know is that the answer to this question is not coming externally. It's not coming from somewhere else. The answer to this question, why, is not coming from somewhere out there. Instead, the answer comes from their own life. Because most of these veterans have gone on to live productive and contributing beneficially to other people in their lives, despite the trauma that they still carry and live with. Why did they survive? To have built their lives and their families and to be there for others, as many have been and continue to be. That's why. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Most of us are in touch with the internet in one way or another all day long. A fast, secure connection matters. It keeps us entertained, informed, and in touch. Localtel cares about your connection. We know strong, reliable internet with your choice of speed makes life better. If you need fast, reliable internet, or maybe an upgrade, or you just have questions, connect with us by visiting localtel.com or call 509-888-8888 today. The agents of Kennedy Real Estate Group are committed to providing the ideal client experience. We believe in the power of relationships. Why? Because we don't just work here, we live here. From the nonprofits we serve, the parks where we play, and the local businesses we support, our team understands the value of living in the Wenatchee Valley. Let's begin your real estate story. Introducing Wenatchee's Riverfront District. It's barbecue time in the valley, and that means a trip to Mike's Meats at the Pibus Market for the best steaks, burgers, sausages, and seafood available for your grill. The tap room at Pibus has you covered for outstanding beer, wine, and cocktails, as well as many popular menu items such as French dip and the Fiesta Quinoa Salad. Visit the Wenatchee Riverfront District for fun, food, and entertainment. The Lake Chelan Chamber of Commerce presents Wonders of Wooden Avenue. Welcome to the newest and funnest fashion boutique on Wooden, featuring mountain chic clothing and men's footwear from Ugg, Brixton, Sorrell, and Free People. Walk on into the Tiffany Blue Building on the second block of Wooden and check it out. It is nearly impossible to describe what you'll find in Lush Life. It's an eclectic collection of items from around the world. See it for yourself at the corner of Wooden and Emerson. Wonders of Wooden Avenue, North Central Washington's premier shopping district. Welcome back to the program. Anytime a civic festival, a civic party can put the word annual behind it means that they did it once and they're going to do it again because it worked so good last year. Rockfest is back this Saturday at the Rock Island Golf Course. Jim Zumidi, of course, so is the city administrator. Is that right? City administrator of Rock Island? It depends on the day. Okay. Basically. Okay. City clerk, treasurer, code enforcement, HR, you know. The odds are if you, if you call up City Hall, he's going to answer the phone. Yeah, I'll take care of it. And we have our good friend, introduce yourself to our television family. My name is Jason Doby, uh, general manager, Rock Island Golf Course. Uh, looking forward to seeing everybody this weekend. So, a little background about yourself. I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big time golfer, but I haven't been out here since you took over. Yes, so I've been here for about six weeks, and uh, it's, been, it's been awesome. Um, I came from Southern Oregon, so it's very similar climate, similar golf course. And this is, uh, you probably know the background of this story. This golf course is a complete 180 from what it was even just 10, 15 years ago. That's what everybody has told me. Yeah, this was like yeah. just a track, yeah. nine holes, not much to it. Now it's 18 beautiful holes, yeah. very walkable holes. Yes. And boy, the golfing community has rediscovered Rock Island Golf it, Course. It really has. From what everybody has told me, it has really jumped over the last few years. And um, unlike most industries, COVID kind of helped the golf side of things. Um, it you know, it was unfortunate, unfortunate time for all of us, but it really helped the golf business and, and helped this place a lot. And in the area, it gave people something to do and be outside, so. It and it helps when you have greenskeepers who give a damn too, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Our, uh, our golf course is really good. And John Roberts, superintendent, has a golf course in great shape. Um, tournament should be a really, really good time. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and start about, let's go, let's go chronologically what's gonna happen here uh, this Saturday. Let's start out with the golf tournament, which kind of kicks things off. Yeah, so the big party gym is in the afternoon, right? Absolutely. So talk, yeah. let's talk golf first. So golf, uh, we're going to start bright and early, uh, 8 a.m. It's going to be an 8 a.m. shotgun, so we'll send everybody out at the same time. Um, different starting holes, obviously, but uh, 
they'll all go out at the same time and the main reason we did that is because we just got to get them off the golf course to prepare for the party yes. so uh we got to get them in and out um not to say that it's going to be rushed or anything but everybody will play it'll be 8 a.m shotgun we're hoping to have everybody done 12 to 12 30 um have the parking lot emptied and start the party have you thought about maybe just having the, the stage is going to be set up on the 11th fairway right uh, close, yeah. yes. Have you got to just that, put the stage spot. up and make it just a hazard on the 11th? I think it will be up. I don't know. The music <laughs> no, doesn't like start till 1. You, yeah. might, you, might be hearing, uh, you might be hearing some, you know, if they're testing equipment or anything like that, you know, the test one twos out there. You might get some of that on 10T and 11, which could be interesting on in those last few holes. But It's Thursday as we air this. Is it too late to sign up? What's the absolute drop dead deadline to get your so, group in? So, uh, unfortunately, right now it is too late to okay. sign up. It is full. We are completely full, uh, which is awesome. We have full field. Uh, 24 teams um, and then we even have a couple teams on the wait list if something does uh, does not happen so um, if you guys have not heard from the golf course we, we are calling every team so if you haven't heard check in um, it is a cash per person entry because we are paying it back out in that so uh, we do need everybody paying cash so we can get that payout back out quickly and um, but yeah it's full which is awesome that's about the only thing that's actually cash Yes. this weekend because yeah. almost everything is going to everything go else here. is going to be card yeah, in the outside, afternoon outside so. of food and yeah. beer where well, you just have your card anyway in fact it is yeah. cashless everything else is free jim uh first of all the lineup is the entertainment whiskey trail free rain chris ward will be on stage fred bauer and uh, pearl jam now four of those groups are going to be here one is not you guess which one is not going to make it whiskey trail uh you would be incorrect <laughs> Pearl Jam we could not, not get Pearl Jam you to did, confirm. Yeah, what, 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 what are you going to do? I know. So last year you said, let's do this. I mean, what Anchi has the Apple Blossom Festival and Cashmere has Founders Day. And I think Leavenworth does some sort of festival, festival of some kind. Yeah. And you guys decided, hey, we're Rock Island. We're proud of our community. We've got a great place to live. Let's do Rock Fest. Rock Fest in Rock Island. Why not? So it's perfect. it went well. Went well enough. So you're going to have number two. Yes. It was it was a great success for us. First time, nobody knew what was going to happen, how it was going to turn out. We figured we had 1,500 or so people throughout the day. This year, we've been told to expect upwards of 5,000 people. So that's uh, scary and exciting all at the same time. Last year was a little warm, but a lot of people got smart. They brought tents and yes. umbrellas and stuff. Please do. And that's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea at this all. This weekend does look a little bit better. It does look better. Yeah, last year was a little on the warm side. So that's your lane, that's your whiskey trail, free rain. Chris Ward and Fred Bauer will be entertaining folks. Beer garden. Beer garden, beer garden, bigger and better this year. So it'll be in the same location up above the stage. Um, and one of the things that's a little different about this is we have the beer garden, but you're not confined to the beer garden to consume your beverage because the entire golf course is a beer garden. So you're not limited to that area. You can you purchase them up there. No kids in that little zone. But after that, if you want to take them out and enjoy your beverage, go for it. And a lot of kids I noticed last year, just they just run around. They're just having fun. Run around having fun. We've got the inflatables again for the kids to bounce on. We've got Elbow the Clown showing up to do his clown shows, his face painting, his balloons. He's got a fire act that he does. I have to stay away from that. I'm not a clown fan. <laughs> no, he could he could do something for you. No, no, yeah? I, I'm okay. good. I'll pass. I'll pass. I think, I think Luke, yeah, I think you'd, you'd warm up to Elbow the Clown. I think yeah, Luke do. really would. You do. Uh, Wenatchee Valley Brewing, Circle 5 and Union Hill. So Circle 5, you're going to have a winery then. Too. Yes. You're going to have some wine. Yep, they're hosting the wine. And uh, like I said, Bumachi Valley Brewing for the beer. We have the cider. Uh, there's going to be stuff inside at the uh, concession stand inside as well. There's going to be food in there. Uh, we've got we've we'll got our shack we'll barbecue. Have, we'll have canned beers um, yeah. and other beer options too if they wanted a can of something else. That they right. Didn't. Yeah. We have our shack, Blue Skies. We have Legends ice cream again. Got to try that. Ariana's tacos, Hawaiian shaved ice, Valley cakes and bakes, Arondo roots, and of course the clubhouse. And a few more surprises that we didn't get in, we didn't have in time to put on here. Do you have time right now? I have time right now. We've got. Uh, there's going to be. Uh, there's going to be some water sales, and I think there's another um, another food vendor coming right now. I don't know who it was. That's okay. A couple things you need to know about, and we can't stress this enough. No dogs. Now people are going to say it's a golf course. No dogs. Who cares? Dogs verboten, and for an obvious reason, dogs will be dogs, and some bad yes, stuff could will. happen. We and don't. We'll have that. none of that. Parking is not only limited, it's basically non-existent. You're going to shuttle through Link. Rick, we, we got the, we got the uh, press release. Link's going to take care of you. A couple yes. of buses. A couple of buses all day long. We've got some designated parking areas in town. It's on here. It's called downtown. We've all wondered where that is. But wow, there's a downtown Rock it's Island. It's downtown Rock Island. Yeah, we're growing up. Yeah. Don't worry about the golf balls flying <laughs> behind us. That's we're, we're fine. It's a danger when you're here. 
So we've got that covered. There's going to be a lot of parking, so just follow the signs. You'll find it, and Link will get you back and forth to the golf course. They'll be here late enough when it's over after the fireworks. Fireworks are 10-ish. Dark enough. Dark enough. So we'll get them going. 10, 15, and so. we're going to have a bigger and better fireworks show than last year. Last year was awesome. This year is going to be better. So we're real excited about that. And if you stick around, Whiskey Trail is going to be the final band that plays. And during the fireworks show, the rumor is the mayor of Rock Island may be singing the national anthem. Well, come anyway, folks. Uh, you know, it, <laughs> you're taking your chances. Now you're thinking, all of the, again, the beer garden is like seven bucks for a token, but you can get whatever you want. Yes. They'll have adult beverages inside that you can take out. Again, it's kind of roam and go. There will be food here available to purchase, but you can bring your own food if you want. You can bring a picnic basket. Absolutely. Today. Yeah. So you Please can, do. You can come here and have a blast and not, not pay a dime. If that's you, true. If you so, if you so doesn't, desire. Doesn't cost no you bring in your own there. alcohol, though. That's the, that's the yeah. one. No alcohol. No alcohol. Right yeah, there you go. Any yeah. non-alcohol except for food, we're good. That's right. That's right. How do we know there's going to be a third? They're already, we're already planning the third. Wow. Uh, Rockfest is back for the second big year. The golf tournament's at 8 o'clock. Forget it. You can't sign up. It's done unless somebody drops out. And then uh, the festivities, one-ish, 1.30? 1 o'clock. The first band starts at 1 o'clock. OK. And then it's just going to party and all day? And then it just goes all party day long all into the Fireworks night. Fireworks at the end. I think we got it all. You got it. What's your handicap? Plus one. Oh, yeah, he is good. Oh, yeah. Jim, Some days. Your... I mean, I have my days like everybody. Yeah. What's your handicap? Oh, we don't have time for that. <laughs> Rockfest, make a day of it right here at the Rock Island Golf Course. You're watching Wake Up in Anchi Valley. We'll be right back. Apple Valley Honda is bringing the future of driving to you. Introducing the all-new, all-electric Honda Prologue EV. Say goodbye to gas stations and hello to a whisper-quiet ride in zero emissions. The wait is over. Finally, a local option for a quality EV from a brand with a track record of exceptional quality and reliability. Experience the Honda Prologue EV for yourself at family-owned Apple Valley Honda. Stay close to home and visit us at Apple Valley Honda today for the life you live. Highlander Golf Course and Grill, located in East Wenatchee, offers terrific views and challenging play for golfers at every skill level. From the golf course to the grill, you don't need to be a member to dine in style and play golf too. Highlander's well-groomed fairways and greens keep it difficult, yet friendly for your regular rounds of golf or a new destination for you and your out-of-town friends. Contact the Highlander Pro Shop today to schedule your tee time, outing, or tournament. Open seven days a week, where everyone is welcome to play and eat. Tour Moses Lake just a gas tank away. With its abundance of outdoor activities, Moses Lake is a great place to visit. From fishing and boating to exploring the city's attractions, there is no shortage of things to do. Whether you're enjoying any one of the variety of restaurants with the family or an adventure-filled day with friends, Moses Lake has something for everyone. TourMosesLake.com and start your adventure today. Well, here we are deep into June, knocking on July's door, but it's going to be fairly cool and somewhat unsettled today. Uh, we still are under the influence of that cold front that passed through yesterday, gave us a couple of pop-up thunderstorms, uh, some lightning caused fires broke out. They were quickly uh, put out by our local fire folks who are really good at what they're doing, but we're still going to be dealing with wind today. Now, we're not going to see any thunderstorms, we don't think at all, in the Wenatchee Valley. For the most part, not bad if you don't like it too hot, but a high of 74, but yeah, going to be windy most of the day today. West wind about 13 to 18 miles an hour. Right now it's out of the west northwest at 14 miles an hour. Gusts close to 30, not out of the realm of possibility today. Still windy tonight, 55 for the overnight low. Our normal overnight low is 57, so that's about normal. But it's still going to be windy until we get to about sunrise on Friday. Now Friday looks mighty fine indeed. Lots of sunshine, very little wind to speak of with a high of 84 degrees. And Saturday is going to be cloudy, but it's going to be nice. I mean, temperature wise, quite comfortable, 87. You won't have to worry about getting sunburned if you're heading out for Rockfest or any of the weekend activities. If you're outdoors, you should be OK with lots of clouds, but no rain in the forecast and no wind. 62 for the overnight low on Saturday. And then the next system comes in late Sunday, just about sunset, right around 845 or so. Here comes another cold front. 
which means we're going to have some breezy conditions late in the day on Sunday. Not too bad breezy conditions late in the day on Sunday, and then we rebound to more warm weather on Monday, which also happens to be the first day of July. And that's it for us. Have a great Thursday. Start your weekend with us tomorrow. Till then, bye-bye.